Tell me, who are you really? Who is the real Shahan Yi? Over the past three years, we've become great friends with Master Shahang Yi. But also over that time, I started to realize that we weren't seeing the full truth. Something was being hidden from us. Don't think I'm going behind Master Shahang Yi's back to expose him. This was his idea. He wanted to expose the truth to the world. Today's documentary was made possible by our sponsors, Huel, a quick, affordable, nutritionally complete source of food with everything that your body needs. Find exclusive offers with the link down below. If you want to know something about my way of life, just look at my bike. All the answers, everything that, that represents me in a way, I have put into the bike. And similar like this, I think when somebody is able to forge such a masterpiece, you know, I think it is the energy that somebody, that somebody has put into the work, the effort, the perfection, the, or let's say, trying to approach at least to create the perfect blade, the perfect sword. Of course, perfect is different from person to person, but this one really, I mean, each little dot there, all different in height, all different in diameter, it's impossible to create the same sword twice. It's impossible to create the same bike twice impossible to create the same life twice and this is the perspective I have this is the perspective I have when I meet people this is the perspective I have when I go to different countries nothing happens the second time something great about it something sad about it both belonging to the same metal. So I show you now my, my other secret passion. My name is Shu Hang Yi. My name is Shu Hang Yi. So my name is Shu Hang Yi. Yes, so my name is Shu Hang Yi. So my name is Shu Hang Yi. I am currently one of the masters who is teaching here in the Shaolin Temple Europe and the goal of our organization, let's say, is to bring the knowledge, the ancient knowledge that we inherit from 1500 years of practice, to bring this a little bit more to this modern way of living because we think that there's quite a lot of different methods that can benefit the people in, in various fields and just by looking out right now into the world, I think it's necessary. Nowhere in this whole world did hate ever ended hate. Hate wants to separate. Hate wants to cut off. The opposite of it is 
you have the force you want to combine you want to connect and it's the harder way of having compassion with a person that gives you hate and it's even harder to even start to develop the feeling of love towards that person life is not gonna get easier it's just that your mind and your body become more resistant, more strong, same situation, more relaxed. Why? Because you finally start to find a solution that, that is within your reach, within your hands. In order for something new to come, something old must go. And that old can sometimes mean let go of what you know until now. Empty the cup and start from the beginning. It's not easy to do, but at the moment it's the only way that I see how something that is blocked can be brought back to movement. You must spill the OT and pour in new one. Then things look different. People change. And people, individuals, are temporary. But universal teachings, sharings, they are timeless. years when things have been published it has always been around the name let's say me being like the headmaster of the Shaolin Temple Europe and I just felt like you know it's, it's not the proper way of judging people solely on what you see on the surface of them this has always been the issue about everything you always judge somebody even if he insults you you just by the words that he's saying. You don't know what type of day he had. You don't know what type of problems he carries inside of him. You don't know how his upbringing, his education is, his uh, mental states are, his views on the world are. You know nothing of this. And I think uh, I would like to, yeah, this is where I thought, okay, I'm going to take myself as the example because people know me as Master Shi Heng Yi. You know, they think I'm a wise guy all, all day long which I am. <laughs> no, but I have other sides as well. Finding yourself in a situation that is challenging to you. It also takes a different type of mindset to also be able to say that I'm not well prepared enough. I'm not good enough at the moment to take that challenge. And afterwards, prepare. Some people don't like what I do. I know it. But that's just the way how it is. I have learned along this way that the more you shine, the more shadows you cast. It just goes hand in hand. That's the price for all of this. On the 16th of October 2023, 
Master Xia Hong Yi publishes the video titled How You Can Really Help. Don't publish again and again what I already started sharing out. It's way more useful if you start, especially in the Facebook groups, for example. Start sharing videos, experiences, or any journals that you are experiencing in your, in your training. So which means for the Facebook groups, please focus again on the training, on the teaching. Don't publish any stuff that is somehow just related there. Don't use any pictures that I've already shared out and repost them over and over again because I really cannot see myself anymore. I would be much more appreciating if I can see how you are training and how your progress is. Okay? Because meanwhile, all of this uh, public exposure is really putting a lot of pressure also on me uh, and it's very hard. Why am I at the moment so unhappy? What is it that uh, like took down my mood today? Yeah. What is it during the daily life which is affecting me the most? What is it? What is the poison that is like poisoning my days and my weeks? What is it that I need to readjust in my lifetime until I finally get to this pleasantness that I am maybe looking for? The warrior has or feels the obligation if something is out of balance out there, I'm going to fix it. Or you try it. And if you try and you fail, you try harder next time. But you don't give up on that statement that you're giving to yourself. You don't want to waste that lifetime right now doing unnecessary stuff that does not bring you forward. Why not? Because in case you come back, you're going to face the same issues again that you did not solve in this lifetime. Make the best of your lifetime. Yeah, cool. <laughs> That's the actually this is the only this is the only bike that I'm really using on the road. Royal Enfield, some British British influence, certainly, and built in India but I just like the style it's easy going it's like a, a nice a nice ride a nice ride after work towards the the sunset or anything like this yeah it doesn't need to go fast you know sometimes life already is too fast this one is to calm down that one is to calm down and in the garage where I used to build the things, build the bikes also from, from some of the customers is getting faster. Actually, the first bike that I ever like really saw, which was really strange to me, was a Ducati Monster. This was the bike that I remembered for many, many years. And I said to myself, one day, if I would uh, have the chance, I want to get such a Ducati Monster. Well, and that was when I was about 14 years old. So 14 years later, I still remember what I said, and I never forgot about it. Um, my parents were refugees coming from Vietnam. They had to, let's say, flee as the so-called boat people and eventually arrived then here in the borders of Germany. But parallel to all of this story, my father also brought me into a Shaolin Kung Fu school when I was four years old. I started with the age of four to do something and I never stopped with it. At only the age of four, Sha Hung Yi began training in Shaolin Green Dragon Kung Fu. By the age of 18, he had passed his master's exam. He has since been training intensely every single day and is often joined by his friend Shen.
Xiao Shen, he's like my brother. He's like my younger brother. We grew up together in the city over here. When he grew up very young, he already started being interested, first of all, on the martial arts. So me at the same time, I also showed you this morning, I'm interested into sometimes technical aspects, meaning you know, I started earning my first money actually by being a bicycle courier, driving out sandwiches that people ordered here in that city. I also had the interest in the martial arts. Xiao Shen and myself, we are simply uh, martial art enthusiasts. We just like this training. We also like to compete, of course. You have the warrior, and then you have the monk. In the core, maybe there is the warrior, but the way how he behaves, it's the monk. On average daily life, he's peaceful. But only because he decides to be peaceful. But he is still able to tap into the other area. That is the difference. Demon's hand, Buddha heart. Develop the demon hand while at the same time maintain the Buddha's heart. Demon and Buddha, you might say they are both very two different sides. Yeah, you need both. You need both. Demon hand, demon heart, no good. Then you are going to become a threat for this world. Demon hand, Buddha heart, well, to be able to access something and then decide upon your heart whether to use it or not. I think this is what we're looking for. On the 19th of November, 2023, Sha Yi will be performing at the historical Shaolin Kung Fu Games where the venerable abbot Shaolin Shi Yong Sin will be attending. Recognition from the abbot of Shaolin would mean the world to Master Shi Yi, as he has been training his whole life for this very moment.
After his performance, Master Shahangi was invited to meet the Abbot of Shaolin, where his great work in the promotion of Shaolin was formally recognized and appreciated. This was the moment that Master Shahangi had been working his whole life towards. The first thing I do when I come in is sit. <laughs> sit and uh, this is like the recent build right now. Also five years in the build, still not finished because um, yeah, there are still some, some, some areas of that bike. I don't know yet how to fix it. It's just a question of time. But I have, yep, that's why uh, I think it's good to always be connected. Sometimes you enter into certain areas of life, you don't know how to continue. It's good to have people with experience already. Goes for the field of martial art, goes for the field of building a bike. I think all the great things so far when it reaches beyond your own, your own field of influence. I think everything that is big, everything that is having a large impact also on a large scale, you need more people. You need a strong team, you need a strong group. You need people that are reliable. You need people also, they don't have to be able to do everything, but like, the common sense still should be there that you're working for, for something bigger than just yourself. It's not about you. Yeah, and one of these things is like this bike. Yeah? I'm, like I said, I'm building on this one almost also five years. And I don't even know how many people have been involved in all of these things. At the end, once it's finished, yeah, everybody is uh, impressed, the ones that know what type of bike that is. Everybody's going to be impressed, yeah, but, they, but nobody knows <laughs> how much time, how much effort, and in a way, of course, like how much uh, patience was necessary to really get it to the point it is right now. There is no screw on this bike I have not touched. I don't necessarily like to leave, let's say, security, safety, or anything like this to coincidence. And at the same time, exactly like I also drink my tea, how I practice my forms. I feel the screw. I feel the screw. I feel the tension of the screw. I can feel when it's too much. I can feel when it's too less. This life is not here to make you suffer. This life is here to make you understand what is your potential. You can't see the proper light <laughs> if you have never indulged in the very, very deepest dark times. Sometimes in order for you to develop something, some type of experience, some type of situations are necessary. It's exactly what makes you cry, exactly what makes you confront yourself and what is super uncomfortable. Exactly these moments sometimes are the ones you should be thankful for because they carry the potential to unlock something very fundamental inside of you. No one is born as a superhero. And nobody is naturally born as being a strong and confident personality. When things are rebalanced, then you can continue on another path again. But before anyone continues, you need to rebalance. Sooner or later, this balance is going to come. The question is if you will be forced to rebalance or if you are able to observe yourself already, see where you are standing and start from there on to directly take it in your own hands 
to balance what is out of balance. Without connection, it is so difficult to create something great. Yeah. So this is my holy garage. It, it certainly is one of these bikes that is also testing, testing my internal development. Because certainly I have attachment to that bike. <laughs> because, you know, spending five years, spending so many years with it, taking care of each single screw out of that bike and then just imagining I'm going to crash it. It can happen. But on the other side, it also, you know, this bike, it just puts right, puts the mirror also in front right of my face. You know, I'm, I'm used to talk to people about in a way that there are methods of detaching, not getting attached to anything, because it's your downfall. And it's the same, I feel it the same. You know, meaning, what's the point of collecting, collecting, collecting more and more and more? Well, there is no point in collecting, so I also came to the conclusion. Why do I pay so much attention on all the details, making sure that it is like a perfect compilation, at least in my eyes, just then afterwards to have a look at it. No. So they are also said, no, actually this is not the point. After this bike is finished, it's going to be ridden. So I'm going to ride it. No matter what. Because, you know, you spend so much time with it to just build up that, that high performance bike. I think I want to know how it feels. So this bike is really mirroring also many things that I see as the challenges for life. Not getting attached to it, but rather not collecting things, but using them. What has been given to you, use it. You can optimize it, but somehow use it in order to gain experience. You know, and especially because Let's say, I'm so worried about that bike. I don't want to crash it. Exactly because of that, I do it. When I have a busy day, when I'm making these documentaries, I'm training in the gym and I'm on the podcast, Huel is what comes in clutch. It has all the nutrition, the protein, the calories that I need to replace one of my meals and save me the time in that day. And it's really affordable. If you want to find out more, head to the link in the description where you can get a free t-shirt and shaker with your order. Thank you so much to Huel for sponsoring the video and also Thank you, Huel, for sending out the new raspberry bars. These things taste unbelievable. The best tasting protein bar I've ever tasted. And again, nutritionally complete. Find out more with the link down below. Thank you for supporting us as always, guys. Have a blessed and productive day and please subscribe for the next video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Oh, and I forgot to say, William, who edited this documentary, my brother, has a new book coming out, published with Penguin Random House. It's The Everyday Stoic, The Simple Rules for a Good Life by William Mulligan, coming to your shelves soon. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's released in the next three or four days. Go check it out. Link down below. Go check it out.